to year 10 geography and we're continuing our look at coasts and coastlines. So last lesson you looked at waves and what exactly they are and how they work. Today we're going to look at what processes shape our coastline. So these waves create certain processes and let's have a quick look at this picture here. We can see that we've got a picture showing this arch just here. Now this is actually Durdle Door in Dorset. So what on earth has caused this one solid piece of rock sticking out into the sea to have this big kind of arch shaped hole in it essentially and also how on earth has this bay here or cove and this bit here been made the clue here is to think back to rivers so can you think of any processes that we learned during our rivers unit in year nine that might come in handy here so We've got three main coastal processes. The first one is erosion. Now this is where we have our material worn away by the water. And in this case, it's gonna be by the sea and the waves. We have transport and that's with movement of our sediment or eroded material. And we've got deposition, which is down material that is being transported. Those are our three main types of processes. We're also going to look at weathering and the different processes or sub-processes that make this up. Let's start with erosion though. Our first erosive process is hydraulic power or hydraulic action. Either one is fine. The exam board likes either of these. How hydraulic action works? Well, it's the force of our waves pushing air into our cracks in the rock. This causes the air inside to compress really tightly and kind of almost implode, which then shatter the rock around it. Let's get a quick diagram of this drawn. So see if you can follow along. We've got our cliff face here with a crack in it. And we've got our ooh, ooh, cliff face with a crack. We've got our waves. There we go, so this is all underwater. Our water is coming in this way. And it is forcing little air bubbles into this crack, which are then gonna implode and cause little pieces to shatter and our crack will get wider. Our second type is attrition. Now this is where two rocks collide together and they break down into smaller pieces. Over time, these rocks become rounder and smoother, less angular, less jagged, until they eventually become fine particles of sand and shale. The easiest way I can demonstrate attrition to you is like that. Two rocks smash together and break apart, going rounder and smoother. It's sort of imagining a washing machine filled with rocks. Essentially, they're jumbling around, they're smashing into each other, and that's why they break down. So to do a little diagram for that one, you've got one rock-ish, you've got another rock. These two rocks are colliding and small little pieces are breaking off. Nice and simple, hopefully. Corrasion is our third type of erosion. Okay, corrasion is our third erosive process and in times of high winds, the waves will pick up and hurl pieces of rock at the cliffs. Now, obviously this causes parts of the cliff to crack and break apart, shattering it. So again, to get this little diagram going here, we've got our cliff face, we've got our water, with a big wave, because we've got our high winds, and we get rocks being thrown at the cliff face from the water, causing again cracks, little bits to break off. Abrasion. Now, abrasion works very closely alongside corrasion because as these rocks are thrown at the cliff, we get the sandpaper movement of them kind of scratching and scraping their way down the cliff. And that causes the cliff to wear away. Now, I'm not going to do a diagram for abrasion because I can't really draw sandpaper. It's pretty hard. But just imagine if, for example, in DT, you use sandpaper or over doing some DIY around the house, um, you see the scraping, the scratching or like a cheese grater, that kind of thing. That's the best way to picture abrasion. It's that scraping and gouging mo motion which causes the cliffs to break. And finally, we have corrosion. 
Now corrosion, you might also hear it referred to as solution, but we're going to talk about solution as one of our transportation processes. So we call it corrosion. And this is where the, the basically the sea, the water dissolves the rock. So due to the carbon in the atmosphere and from decaying sea creatures, the sea becomes a weak carbonic acid. It's a very weak acid, so it wouldn't affect humans, but it affects the alkaline rocks, such as chalk and limestone. This causes it to dissolve and wear them away. And the best way I can demonstrate that is basically putting a sugar in your tea. Okay, it causes it to dissolve and wear away. Those are our five types of erosive processes. So let's talk about weathering. Now, weathering is the disintegration or breaking down of rocks. And where this happens, there will be small piles of rock fragments by the cliff. Now, this isn't by the water or the coastline. This is by other processes. And we can split this into two types, which is one, mechanical weathering. Now, mechanical weathering takes a few forms. The first one is freeze-thaw weathering. Freeze-thaw weathering is where we have water, for example, from rainfall, becoming trapped in a crack or a joint in the rock. As the air temperature drops below freezing, the water freezes itself and expands, which puts pressure on the rock. And you can see that in the diagram down here. So we've seen, number one, the water collects in the crack. It frees and expands. Now, when the temperature gets above freezing again, the ice melts and thaws, contracting, and the water gets deeper into these cracks. And if it repeatedly happens, the rock will weaken and eventually will break up. And you can see it can actually even split in half, like it's shown in number four here. So our water collects in the rock, freezes itself, cracks the rock as it's doing that, contracts, gets deeper into the cracks, freezes again, cause it to happen over and over again, like a cycle. But we can also have salt weathering as a type of mechanical weathering. And this is where our seawater containing salt evaporates and leaves the salt crystals behind. Now, these crystals grow in the cracks and holes in the rock and they expand and put pressure on the rock, causing causing bits to flake and break off. Hopefully this is making sense. If it isn't, wind yourself back, have another look and please try and complete the task sheet, giving a definition of how you go. Chemical weathering. This is caused by chemical changes in the atmosphere. So carbonation, where dissolved CO2 from the atmosphere makes rainwater slippier, much like our corrosion in our erosive processes. And this will slowly dissolve alkaline rocks such as chalk and limestone. Okay, now this is not discussing acid rain. All rainwater is slightly acidic. Acid rain is where rainwater becomes more acidic, but we're not gonna talk about that here. This is carbonation, where all rainwater is mildly acidic, much like our seawater, which causes the alkaline rocks to dissolve. We then have biological weathering. And biological weathering is nice and simple, really. It's due to the flora and fauna, the biological things in the environment. So plant roots growing in the rocks, they will crack uh, the rock and cause it to break apart. Rabbits or other animals that burrow, badgers, moles, they cause the rocks to weaken, okay? Especially soft rocks such as sandstone. Mass movement. Mass movement is the downward motion or sliding of material under the influence of gravity. And there are a couple of types it happens. So if we look at the diagram, we've got mudslides, uh, we've got rotational slumps, rock falls and landslides. Now, they can happen fast or slow. They can happen when the soil is dry or wet. So let's talk about rock slides to start with. So our rock falls and rock slides are very, very similar. OK, now a large amount of the rock slides down a cliff and this happens in a fairly straight slip plane. So as you can see in these diagrams, it all seems quite straight. OK, so there's our cliff and our rocks are falling down straight. They're not at a curve or an angle. They're going straight down. And these blocks of rock kind of fall down and they keep contact with the cliff. And as they fall, they break away and they kind of stay at the bottom in this large collected bit. So they'll either be on the shore or they'll be in the sea as this pile of rocks and rubble. Mudslides are usually wet, rapid, and tend to occur where the slopes are steep. So they've got an over a 10 degree gradient. Now these usually occur where there isn't much plant or vegetation cover. So the soil is often loose and unconsolidated. They always happen after a period of heavy rain. So we need very, very wet, saturated soil, as you can see from this side of the graph where our moisture is up in the very, very top bit of the wet side. Now, at the base of the mudslide, the saturated soil spreads out into a lobe, which you can just see here. We've got these lobes of soil as it slid and eventually just kind of spreads.
slip, and this is along a curved slip plane. Now the curve is a concave slip plane, so it's curved inwards. And as this happens, the material rotates backwards into the cliff face as it slumps. So you can see it kind of these little bits of past slumps as it drops down. Mass movement is a little bit tricky to understand. So wind it back, have another go, see if you can draw the diagram on the task sheet for each type of our mass movement. Moving on to transportation processes. Traction. Traction is where we have a large rocks and boulders roll, rolling along the seabed or sea floor. So to draw you your diagram, here is our very large boulder. Oh, that didn't work at all. Let's add an extra bit to it. There we go. There's a very large boulder. That's what we want. And this is just rolling along the seabed. Okay. Much like the wheels on a tractor, it's the big bit and it rolls and rolls. Oops. Our second type of transportation is saltation. Now, this is where our smaller rocks and pebbles bounce or skip over one another in a leapfrog motion. So to show you what I mean by that, here's a small pebble. Here's another small pebble. It bounces along the seabed. OK, so jumping over it and then this one will jump over here. And then it will carry on. So this will jump here and it, they just keep bouncing, jumping and skipping along the seafloor. Suspension is where it's been eroded by attrition. So they've broken off of our larger, more angular rocks. These are carried by the water. So they're just held up and carried. This is always our fine, part, fine, very small pieces of rock, which are easy enough for the water to lift. And then solution. Now, this is what happens after our corrosion takes place. And this is where particles of dissolved rock are carried in the water. Well, that's everything, guys. I hope that was a helpful look at breaking down these different types of processes. And please go through, complete the task sheet, use the links and all the help that we've given you. Good luck.